Hey, JC here for RetireCheap.Asia. Guess what? It's 2015 and we're off for a road trip. Our first road trip of 2015. So where are we going? I don't have a clue. You might be saying, what do you mean you don't have a clue? Well, we'll talk about what this video series is going to be about. Some idea of where we're going and uh, some things you should pay attention to if you're coming over to be a ripper, a retiree in paradise in Thailand. So, or anywhere else for that matter. So let's jump in the Ripper Mobile here and we're gonna go off and, uh, and see some sights of Thailand. Um, and uh, I'll talk to you while I'm driving about some things that I think you should be aware of, okay? Let's go. you can see and we're off going down the road so uh, why I don't know where I'm going is because um, there's a lot of times I've been doing these videos for YouTube and I'd be saying okay I'm gonna go to Nong Kai or I'm gonna go to Nak on Sawan or Chiang Rai and do videos and so that was always a goal to do and uh, I always saw signs along the road and stuff of cool neat places that I always wanted to stop and see so I figured, hey, we're going to see some of these places. And they're not necessarily tourist attractions or anything like that, but just either natural, uh, natural beauty of Thailand or something I saw that the sign caught my eye and I wanted to see again or wanted to see for the first time. So we're going to do that. And uh, I got some more things to tell you, but instead of watching me, why don't you watch the road and see what I see while I'm driving? So check this out and I'll continue this. So anyway, what I wanted to talk to you about while we're traveling down the road here, we're actually coming out of the south, we're gonna bypass Bangkok uh, a little bit, but so you can catch some of the scenery as we go along and uh, check out what it's like to drive here. Check out the river, the river. crossing the river here. This is uh, the river that goes in through the, it actually joins up with the river that passes through uh, Bangkok. Um, so anyway, what I wanted to talk to you about was you're going to go through some stages when you come over. And when I say I don't know where I'm going, some people go, what do you mean you don't know where you're going? Well, the reason I'm saying that is I used to be a sailor. I still am a sailor, but don't get to sail that often. But when I had my sailboat and I'd invite people to go out sailing, they would say, okay, where are we going? I said, we're going sailing. And they go, okay, well, when are we coming back? I said, I don't know, we're going sailing. And they were like confused about this. But sailing is about the act of sailing. It's not about getting somewhere. Now, if you're a cruising sailor, you might have an outcome and try and get someplace within a certain amount of time. But just the act of going out and enjoying the day sailing was what the day was about. And so this is sort of like what we're gonna do with this trip. We're off in the Ripper Mobile, and we're gonna cruise along. We don't have an agenda. No time we have to be back. And so we're just gonna cruise along and bring you all along with us. Now. The reason I want to mention all this is because you're going to be, if you're thinking about moving over to Thailand or any place full time, becoming an expat or a ripper, as I call y'all, um, you're going to. A, I have a, I actually have a product that's called Making the Move: 30 Days to Packing Up and Leave. And what it is, it's a video coaching and checklist for 30 days to get all your affairs in order so that all you have after 30 days is keys in your hand and your plane ticket and you're headed for the airport. You've divested yourself of everything. You've covered every base that needs to be covered. Your I's are dotted, your T's are crossed, and you're ready to go. Not, not have to worry about, oh my God, I forgot something or getting on a, uh, the phone to try and get somebody to do something for you or having to jump back on a plane. All that stuff is taken care of. So, 
you're going to be overwhelmed with stuff, and that's what that, that program is for. So you don't get overwhelmed. Everything's checked off for you day by day. Leads you through the 30 days. Now, that's going to keep you adrenaline pumping. You're going to be oh, excited about your trip coming up when all that's done, getting on a plane, getting over. Adrenaline again. You know, you got your new life all coming up, all this cool stuff. So you're very occupied. Now what's going to happen? You're going to step off the plane, we're at whatever country you're moving to, and you're going to be, again, overwhelmed with all the new stuff. You get a new culture, a new language, everything's new, everything you, you see, you've never seen before, most likely. You're overwhelmed and enthusiastic. Then what's going to happen? Well, do you have a job anymore? No! Do you have a reason to wake up every day? Not really. So what's your day going to be like? This is why I brought this up. Your new life has to be like sailing. You can't really, you're going to need something to do every day. You're going to need hobbies and stuff. Or you can't go sit in a bar on a bar stool. Uh, you can't be bored and depressed sitting in a room. I mentioned this before about loneliness in a video. You got to get out and socialize, learn some of the language. But every day has to be about enjoying the moment, enjoying your new life. You don't have to have an outcome. You don't have to have things to do. You don't have to have a time schedule anymore. And that's the great, great thing about retirement. You did all that. You've done there. You've been there, been there, done that, and got that T-shirt. And now it's time to chill. People ask me, "What does JC stand for?" I said, "Just chilling." Because that's it. That's what we do over here. If you don't have a business, a company, and stuff like that, now you might get involved in a relationship, and your significant other might put you on some kind of a time schedule or, a, or something like that. But for you, it's going to be every day. And somebody said, well, why don't you make a video of what your life's like every day? My life's just hanging out. I mean, we don't really do anything. You get up, have breakfast, sit and talk. Go out for a walk, go sit on the beach, you know, go see something we haven't seen before. Everything is just about checking out new stuff. There is no routine. Every day, if I did a video every day for 30 days, every day would be different. But, but that's just my life. Some people need routines. Some people need certainty in their life. So they're going to develop routines. And once they get set in their routine, going out and traveling like what I'm doing here with Nat is, is going to be uncomfortable for somebody. They're going to say, oh, I don't want to get in, go someplace I don't know, because they're going to settle in and they're going to feel very comfortable. But you got to feel comfortable with not having an outcome every day of things you have to accomplish. It might be just going and enjoying the aesthetics of the moment, going to a park, go and sit down watching the world go by, go sit in the mall. Take your time, but come up with some kind of hobby or interest, whether it's painting, whether it's uh, writing, photography, a blog uh, on the internet, something to keep yourself occupied and focused while you do nothing. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Uh, again, I have a, a heading in my videos that are cool stuff to see and do, so we're going to cover a lot of those. I want all these videos to stand on their own, though. You know, I'll do series of videos when I go someplace, um, like I did in uh, Nong Kai, and there'll be like three or four videos of all the stuff. We're going to probably do that for one or two places along the way, but the rest of these videos will be something that I see that I'd like to share with you, and also some tips and ideas and uh, something, some things to contemplate about your retirement and uh, how to deal with all this as a ripper. So I hope these videos will be helpful for you. Happy 2015, and uh, we're off on the road again. So come along with us and uh, enjoy. I hope the information I just gave you is helpful, something to think about. But remember, when it comes to spending your time, whether you're at home, or in your new home in a different country, there's always an option. Take care. JC out. So if you're traveling along the highway, you might get a little bit hungry every once in a while. And so there's, they sell food all along the highway in Thailand. You can get all sorts of fruits. You can get all sorts of stuff. So. 
some people think, well, it's going to be dirty, you know, the traffic going by. But, you know, they'll cover up the food lots of times, keep it fresh. But here's a sign. I'm not exactly sure what it says, but I think he's got some kind of barbecue. Uh, what does this say? Yang. Yang. You need barbecue. Let's see what he's barbecuing over here. So what do you cup? Sabai di mai? Me and I. Arana? No. Wow. Wow. These are little rats. Barbecue rat. Oh, he's got some teeth too. And he, uh, oh. oh my god. Ding wah. Any little tail, do I? Uh, He's got little tails, do I? Hang. 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 Aroi mai? Hang. No, any aroi mai? Aroi. Mai koi gin. Mai koi gin. Oh my god. Tong koi pak pit. Any gin kao la? Oh, the rats. Oh, the rats eat the rice. So the rice rats. Na, koi gin mai? You've eaten this before. Ting Wong, quick in on this when you were young. How may? My all on. No, you don't want any. Any gin say cow ni ao may? Ton ni yang gin ma dai. Ton ni yang khan ma dai. My gin say cow ni ao, chay may? Ao ba sap la ko kang. Kang. Ah, pet pet, no? Oh, they stir fry it. Oh, they cook it with black pepper and stuff. Oh, oh, I don't know, Meru. Kongua, Kongua. Okay, I think we'll pass on the barbecue today. All right, kapun kap, bye bye. So there you go. You get all sorts of food when traveling down the highway. You got a lot of choices. Remember when it comes to eating on the highway when you're traveling? There's always an option. But for today, rats aren't an option for me. See you, JC, out. So if you're anywhere around Supambari or traveling, even traveling by, one of the things I wanted to always check out that I knew was here was the 100-year-old market. Samchu uh, Market, 100-year-old. Now, this is a, on historical uh, records. This is a conservation uh, historical site. And so I want to check this out. Now, this is a Riverside Market. It's been around for a long, long time. You can go inside, and there's all sorts of um, historical things. Um, antiquities, from what I understand. You can get old-style Thai dishes to eat. You can get your uh, photography, uh, your photograph taken with a 100-year-old photography equipment, all sorts of stuff. I hear it's so big that you can take a boat tour around this thing for 59 baht. So it's something I want to check out that I've never seen before and see what it's all about. Um, like I said, it's a very historical place. And um, I mean, even the, the post box, which is over here, has been around since 1911. And so even the post box is old. And from what I understand, uh, the adornments on the buildings, the gingerbread adornments and stuff, uh, there's like 19 varieties of it as well. So let's go check it out, see what it's got to offer. Come on with me.
Sam Chuk, 100-year-old market is very, very cool. Now, why it's so important is originally a lot of the commerce was done on rivers in Thailand, and this was a major hub of commerce, Sam Chuk Market. But what happened is they started to build roads, and once they started to build roads, then almost this almost came into demise. They were going to tear all these buildings down because they were of no use anymore. But the conservation uh, groups came up with an idea, why don't we make it into a historical place for people to come visit. Now, most of the products here are new, but there's a lot of stores that have antiquities that you can see, uh, old cloths, old lanterns, and things like that, the way things used to be. You can still find food items that are special, piset they call in Thai, piset, special for this area and produced by the vendors here. So this is very cool as well. As you can see, a lot of groups come through here, especially schools, to educate them on the way things used to be. So, if you want to catch some uh, historical, uh, historical feel to some place, this has got it. Very neat. And I can sort of picture the way things were 100 years ago. So if you're in the Supanburi area, I suggest taking a little stroll around here. Now, right now, it's January. It's very nice and cool. But I can see this might get a little warm during the summer. So come check out the 100-year-old market in uh, Supanburi. All right? JC, out. Remember, when it comes to entertaining yourself when you're living in Thailand, there's always an option. See ya. Hey, JC here for RetireCheap.Asia. It's been a long time since I've added videos to one of my categories in YouTube, and that is a playlist of neat things to see and do. Now, what I'm trying to do is most of the time I'm headed to some place, I'm going down the road in the Ripper Mobile, I don't stop anywhere because I have a goal. This time we're actually doing something like sailing. We're sailing in the Ripper Mobile, which means I'm going to look for places that I've never stopped for bef at before and show you some of the neat things to see and do in Thailand. One of the things I always blew by, and I'm standing by the road, so if we get some traffic going by with some noise, just bear with me. The signs I've always blown by was Boon Chawat. Boon Chawat. I saw this sign, but most of the time, whoever was traveling with me was asleep, so I couldn't ask them, What is Boon Chawat? But I'm going to go inside, get away from the traffic, and talk to you a little bit about this. I've never seen it before, but I've always wanted to because the sign interested me. The sign shows an aquarium, a lion, tigers. Pheasants and peacocks and stuff like that. So we're going to go inside and check it out. I'll tell you a little bit about it. But this is a sign I always blew by and I never stopped. So today we're stopping and seeing what they have here. So here we are at Boon Chawat. And so what does Boon Chawat have? Well, it has all sorts of things, but a little history about it. The Tachin River used to go through Supamburi and along here. And what happened is eventually it created this lake. And so what they did is in 1994, they said, wow, there's this great lake. It's got all this water. So what they did is they dammed it up and excavated it. And they actually have about 10 million square cubic meters of water. And so what they said is that we can use this for agriculture now. So they used to use water for agriculture. Then they said, well, on the, the anniversary of the 50th year, of the ascension to the throne, His Majesty the King had an anniversary and they said, we're going to turn this into uh, a learning center. So what they've got here is a number of things. Now, normally, like, I would not go to a zoo in Chiang Mai. It's too expensive. It's prohibitively expensive. But because this is for Thai people to learn about agriculture, so it's got an agricultural extension area. It's got an uh, aquarium about learning about aquatics. It's got a zoo. Um, it's got about raising indigenous vegetables and fruits in Thailand. So they got hydroponic centers and everything. So all this stuff is available here for you to check out. Um, it's inexpensive, like to go to the aquarium is uh, 30 baht. To go to the zoo, which has an extensive, extensive uh, amount of animals there, about 30 baht as well. And it doesn't have a foreigner price and a Thai price. So it's very inexpensive. Now, the cool thing about this, now coming from Western countries, you say, oh, I've always seen zoos. I've seen zoos before and stuff like that. That's true. What's cool about this, and because it isn't expensive, even on a Category 1 or Category 2 budget, if you're traveling by and you've got Thai friends, stop and treat them to see something like this. Because 
some of your Thai friends haven't been on airplanes, never seen a zoo, never seen anything like this. So to stop for them, for them to experience something like that is a big treat. So we're going to check it out, uh, see all the sites that are here, um, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. So this is another thing that's cool to see and do while you're in Thailand. And now this is about 60 kilometers from Supamburi. So, a very cool place to come check out, enjoy the day. It's very calm. This isn't calm because all the schools are here. But uh, coming in, there's a beautiful lake you can sit by, have a picnic, all sorts of stuff. Uh, there were hardly any people in the zoo. So I guess the aquatic center and the aquarium is the highlight here. But let's go check it out and see what it's got to offer. See ya.
go. Boom Chawat is a great place to go. Spend the day, take your Thai friends and see a lot of cool stuff. Things that most Thais, average Thais, they come from villages and stuff, don't get an opportunity to see. So this is very educational, it's a lot of fun. And even for us, it's a great way to spend a day. Um, but note that um, when the big aquarium, um, the zoo is free, the, the fish area, the aquarium area, it was 30 baht, but if you want to go into the aquarium part where you're walking through the tunnels and stuff, there's actually a two-tier price system. It's 150 baht for Thai people, 200 baht for foreigners. And I've said this before to my members and stuff like this. If you have a Thai company and you have a tax ID card, or if you got a Thai driver's license, usually you can show it to them and get the Thai prices. So something to remember, something to keep in mind. And this is something to check out if you're near Supambari. So there you go. I hope it's been helpful. I hope it's been fun, educational. Um, remember, when it comes to spending time, having fun, doing some cool things, there's always an option. See you, JC, out. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed our little uh, series on neat things and cool things to see and do. I uh, hope you enjoyed the aquarium and the zoo and the rat on a stick as well. But for me, I'm going to opt in for a little uh, more of the Thai traditional road food, not road kill. <laughs> oh, by the way, I did a little more uh, research about this and asked some questions. And you don't eat the rat on the stick with, like, sticky rice. You cut the tail off, you cut the head off and the teeth and stuff. And what you actually do is take the meat off of that and you cook it into other dishes. So there you go. It's not like you gnaw on the rat on a stick. So <laughs> a little information and education on rat on a stick. So when it comes to eating food, there's always an option in Thailand, that's for sure. See you, JC, out.